Well, I hope you had a good time creating your processes and documenting because now we come to the technician part of our service department. So if you got your processes documented, you know that basically the people that produce all the money in our shop are our technicians. They are our manufacturing process. So today, we're going to be looking at some ways to evaluate your technicians. So just like you walk through your service processes, we have some tools in the toolbox that I'm going to have you walk through to kind of determine what level of technicians you have. As I said, I've been doing this over 30 years and I've had people say, well, gosh, Bob, you know, I, I have a techs or I have B techs or I have a C tech or I have a level one tech or a level two tech or a level three tech. And I used to tell people again, well, what does a level one or an A-level tech mean to you? And they go, well, they've been with us a long time, Bob. And I go, so does the length of time somebody's been with you determine the level that they are as a technician? And they go, well, no, there's other things. So what I decided to do several years ago was say, look, there's le different levels of technicians in every type of service department out there. And after 30 plus years of doing this, I said, really, we need some document. I told my team, we need to create a document so that when we say this is an A-level technician, we know what that really means. It's not this cloudy thing. There's documentation that says an A-level technician, an A-plus technician, these are the skill sets that they would have if they're going to be there. Their diagnostic skills and electrical, hydraulic, mechanical, these are the skills they're going to have. Their knowledge of computers, their billing efficiency, these are the things they're going to do. And if they do those things, they're going to be what we're going to call an A or an A-plus level technician. And in this tool, I also wanted to create a compensation strategy for it based upon your labor rate. So I want you to get into the toolbox and I want you to pull up your first tool for today is going to be your tech skills and pay ranges. And I want you to look at that sheet and you're going to find that I qualify technicians by A, B's and C's. Some people do it by one, twos and threes, but a, a is a one, a B is a two, a C is a three. It all makes the same uh, makes it all work the same way. But I want you to go through and I want you to take a look at this. Now, what I've done, again, I've got multiple level, levels in there for all different levels of technicians that based upon their skill set. What I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to look at it. And then if you've got technicians, I'd like for you to put their names kind of where they fit based upon what I'm telling you that an A plus technician would do or a B level technician would do. So put their names on there and then look at the pay structure because the pay structure is a percentage of your uh, gross or your uh, posted labor rate and see if, do I have number one, the techs assigned correctly? Are my A techs really A techs? Because they may just be really good B techs, right? Or, the, or your B techs may be really good A techs. But use this tool to help you figure out what it is. And then we have the ability in here to help them, help technicians figure out if I want to make more money, then you're going to have to move up another level, right? Another pay range, another skill set uh, in our shop down here. And so it gives your technicians, this tool gives your technicians a very clear way of learning how do I need to make more money? What do I need to do to make more money? And what skill sets do I need to, uh, to, to develop to do that? So that's your first task for today. The next one is, is I want to have you pull up also another tool that's going to be in there. And it's a service technician skills and knowledge test. Now, this is a tool that's been around for a while. It was created by Ohio State. Uh, it was a part of a, a tool that the North American Equipment Dealers Association used to use for their members before they discontinued business. And we've got it and had permission from them to utilize this tool for our dealers. So we have it in our toolbox also. Now, this is a cool test. It's going to take about 45 minutes for an employee to take this, a technician to take it. But the thing I love about this test is it lets us take a look at what the skill sets are that are strong or lacking with each technician. So sometimes I have a technician that's really good maybe on hydraulics or mechanical, but they're really weak on electrical. Well, this assessment will tell you really what they're strong or weak on, and it'll give you the ability during slower times when training opportunities come up to get your technician into training that's going to help them improve in those different levels. Now, I will tell you, it's a relatively difficult test. It's not easy. It does have a scoring key as a part of it, so you'll be able to score this as soon as the technician gets done. Now, a lot of my shops have all their technicians take it because they want to create kind of a baseline of where people's knowledges are at. So maybe have your very best technician take it. If you don't have them all take it, at least have your best technician take it and have him go through and score it. And if he scores an 80 or an 85 on it, then you know that if you're interviewing a new technician, because they sh all your technicians that you're interviewing should take this test, because they all tell you they're the greatest technicians in the world and they got a $40,000 snap on toolbox, that doesn't make you a great technician. 
have all the people you're interviewing for a technician take this assessment. It's going to take them about 45 minutes to do it. But if you have somebody you're interviewing and they score an 85 and your very best tech scores an 85, you immediately know that they've got a skill set or at least a knowledge very similar to your very best technician. You've got somebody that's been a technician for 15 years and they say they're the greatest technician in the world and they take this assessment and they score a 40 and your best tech scored an 85. They don't have the skill set that you need to do that job. So this is kind of a cool assessment. I'd love for you to go through and do it. Take it out. Again, it's got a scoring key as a part of it. It's called the Service Technician Skills and Knowledge Test. It will take about a 45 minutes to do it. But again, I'd like for you to look at it. And if you would, do me a favor. Have your best technician go ahead and take it. Let them know that it's not going to lose their job if they score low on it. Have them take it, and then we can create a baseline for that. So those two things that are going to help us get our arms around our technicians. The tech skills and pay ranges is the first thing I want you to do. Go through, look at it. You only have one tech. Figure out where he falls on those levels. If you've got multiple technicians, put their names by each one of those levels and see where they're at. Let's us know what skills they need to work on to become better and to make more money. And then the last tool I want you to work on today is the service technician skills and knowledge test. And again, at least give it to your best technician so that they can, we can score them on it and baseline it on it. So if we're looking at hiring another technician at some point, we can use that assessment to let us know what the skill set of that new technician or potential technician is for our shop. It's going to take a little bit of time to do this, but this is going to be a big payoff day for you, getting your arms around your technicians and their knowledge. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.